Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at the A2 part of equilibrium. So you must revise your AS syllabus for this in terms of when you were looking at the effect of temperature, pressure, catalysts, concentration, things like that on the position of the equilibrium. You need to know it to be able to apply it to some of these A2 questions. The one new thing which does get introduced in this topic though is KC, the equilibrium constant. So before you were talking very qualitatively about moving to the left, moving to the right, now you're actually going to stick a number on it. So calculations are the order of the day in this topic. So in terms of actually being able to write an equilibrium expression, Kc, so this is your equilibrium constant. So this is what we're actually going to be working out. Now it's product over reactant. So repeat that to yourself 10 or 20 times until it's in your brain and there is no doubt about it. Product over reactants. Now the way it's done, you use square brackets because it represents concentration. Your actual chemical would go in here, the species of it, and the molar ratio number, the stoichiometric number, that is what the concentration of C gets raised to the power of. So likewise for D, and B like that. So this is the equation what we're going to actually be dealing with. Um, so we're going to be working out concentrations, putting them in, to actually work out KC. So I'll make up some numbers. So you'll be told a question along the lines of you've started with such and such amount of moles or concentration of the species at equilibrium it'll tell you one of them and then you're going to use the actual ratio of these numbers to work out the others. So you do need to be fairly competent with maths and looking at ratio. Right, so as I said, you'll always be told a start number. And obviously we need a volume, because obviously concentration, moles divided by volume. So you're always dealing with moles in these usually. So we've been told we started with 4 moles of A, A moles of B, and also in the tank there was 2 moles of C, 0 moles of D. So this did not come from these reacting, it was already just sitting there in the actual tank container, whatever. Now at equilibrium you could be told something like... It was found out that there was now 8 moles of C sitting in that container. So obviously we've made some. So now we need to look at the ratio of how much of the products was actually used up for that. In terms of working these out, some people can just jump straight from top to bottom. Others like a middle row on the table where they've got... Something like this, a used and created row. Uh, some people, as I said, prefer it. Others tend to trip up when they've got too many numbers on the page. Find out what works for you. Right, so we can see there we've created 6 moles of C. So we need to look at the ratio to work out the others. So obviously reactants are going to be used up to form products. So if we formed 6 moles there... Look at the ratio between A and C. It's a 1 to 3 ratio. So every time we use up one of these, we will form three of these. So if we formed six moles there, we must have used up two moles of A. So if we started with four and we used up two moles, at equilibrium we finished with two moles. So likewise, continue on with this. We can, you can compare any ratio you want, by the way. Most, though, I tend to try and get a number with one there and then do one to such ratios. They are easier, less chance of slipping up, rather than dealing with things like 
two to five, three to seven, things like that, those, unless you're good with maths, will start screwing you up. So now I've got a one to two ratio of A to B. So what that means, every time I use up one mole of A, I will use up two moles of B, since they are both reactants. So if I've used up two moles there, then I must have used up four moles of B. So started with A, used up four, therefore finished with four. Across here, we'll compare A to D. So every time I use up one mole of A, I form two moles of D, because D is a product, it is being made. So if I've used up two moles, I know here I'm going to form four moles. So if I started with zero, I've made four, at equilibrium, there is going to be four moles. So these are moles. We need concentrations to go into our equation. So as I said, you should be able to work it out. Mole, volume, actually work out the concentration. So just divide them all by the volume. Keep an eye on the unit. It must be in decimeters cubed. If you're given meters cubed or centimeter cubed, convert it. So there we have our concentrations now. So with these, we would put them into that KC expression, what I had written up earlier. So now simply work this out to get a number, so I can see cancel, cancel, um, 4, 16, so 64 is the value. Now you do need to work out the units for KC as well. So working out the units is quite similar to the way you worked out the units when you were doing the, the rate constant in the previous topic. So we can see on the top here, we've effectively got five units of concentration, three there, two there. So moles per decimeter cubed, standard unit for concentration, and we've got three underneath. So what we are gonna be finishing up with is that. Again, write it out in full if you need to. So have mol dm minus three times mol dm minus three, five times on top three times underneath, do some cancelling, and then you would finish up with that. So do not be worried if you've got an even number on top, well, if you've got the same number on top and the same number underneath, you can finish up with a, a no unit style thing for KC. That is a correct answer if you've done this okay. Um, do not be worried though, there are ways of asking this question. What they could do is sort of, give you the value for KC and perhaps have an unknown concentration there. So it would just be a case of just rearranging the equation just to work it out. You've done it in the past when you've looked at things like isotopes where you've been given the, the relative atomic mass and actually asked to work out backwards to figure out the percentage abundance of an isotope. Exactly the same with this. Now the other things what they can look at with KC is in terms of what will happen to the number in, when you change um, certain factors, things like catalyst, temperature, pressure, so forth, things like that. Just want to point out by the way, if you've got a value of 1 for KC, then obviously the ratio of top to bottom are the same, same concentrations on top to bottom. So value of 1 in the middle, if it's greater than 1, since obviously we've got product over reactant, if product is bigger than reactant, you're going to have a number bigger than one. If reactant is bigger than product, you will have a number less than one. So the bigger your value there, the more you are going towards product. Smaller your value, more you're going towards reactants. So back on track. As I said, you need to revise the AS. What happens if you add a catalyst to a system? What effect does it have on the position of the equilibrium? 
None. It increases the forward and reverse rates equally. So it will not change any of these actual values. It just gets you to them quicker. So your value of KC will not change if you add a catalyst. What would happen if you added, say, some of C? I'm just going to use some simple numbers here just to show you it. If you imagine all of the numbers you've got 2 over 1 like that in terms of just boiling these down. So a 2 to 1 ratio of product over reactants. Now if I add some, con some concentration of C into the equation then you should know the position of the equilibrium will move to the left because it will be trying to reduce the amount of C. So if I say I added 3 to the actual product side like that system doesn't like that it tries to use some of it up to push that way get rid of it and make some reactant to get back to this initial ratio by maths right and equals there so uses some of it up form some reactants and you will notice we are now back to the same ratio so adding concentration changing pressures things like that will not have an effect on KC. The only thing which will affect KC will be temperature. So if I imagine this is an endothermic reaction. If I increase the temperature, then increase in temperature is going to move in the endothermic direction as the system attempts to cool itself down. So an increase in temperature is going to use up some of your reactants and push towards the products. It's going to move to the right. So your value of Kc is obviously going to change because I've not added any of this stuff. I've just taken away, used it and made more of that. So your value for products will now be bigger, well in terms of the ratio of before, will be bigger over reactants than it was initially. So your value of Kc would change. So temperature is the one which would change it. And concentration, catalysts, what you will get asked on, don't. Um, that's pretty much it. It's a fairly small topic. It's just mainly getting the hang. Do plenty of practice questions of those until you can do them in your sleep. As I said, it's just getting the hang of actually being able to use the ratios. Thank you.